Well, ladies and gentlemen, trust is here. And you may say, what in the world is trust? Well, trust is the recreational UAS safety test. This is something that the FAA just put in place and is going to allow you to fly your drone for recreational purposes. And I get three good news. The first one is that it's free. The second one is that it's quick, it takes about 30 minutes. And the last one is that you can't fail it. So I'm gonna get in and give you all the details to why, how, and everything that you need to know about this. So let's get to it. So the first thing you may be asking is, where do I get this thing done? Well, the FAA has an approved list of providers and actually Pilot Institute is one of them. So you can head over to trust.pilotinstitute.com. You can see the link down here. And uh, the way that you know that you pick the right provider is because they have this trust logo. If they don't have the trust logo, they are not approved by the FAA. So this is where you're gonna get the testing done, which is very straightforward. Now you may say, who needs to do this? And the answer is also very simple, anyone who is flying their drones for recreational purposes. Uh, recreational purposes, the, the, the regulation is under 49 U.S.C. 44809. Uh, I know this is very technical, but um, th this is where the regulation lives if you want to fly your drone for recreational purposes. And you'll learn all of this in the trust, in the trust uh, test and the trust training in itself. Uh, this is regardless of weight. If you are flying a mini or if you're flying anything over 55 pounds, as long as you're flying for recreational purposes, you have have to take this test. There's no minimum age. If you have a young child that is uh, that is flying their drone, they also need to take the test. And I'll get to that in a minute with more information. Um, also a question that I've been uh, hearing a lot on forums is, yes, if you are part 107 and you are flying for recreational purposes, you do need to take the test. And, and I know that there are some people that say, well, I took a test already. I took a test under part 107. I don't need to do this. I know all the rules. Well, the slight difference is the fact that the rules for recreational purposes are not the same base as the rule for Part 107. They're a completely different set of regulations. So in a way, it does somewhat make sense that you would have to also do this exam uh, as well as doing the, the Part 107 if you want to fly under Part 107. So uh, if you have a Part 107, if you're flying for recreational purposes, go ahead and take it. It's 30 minutes. It's free. It's, it's rather simple. You'll be up to date and then you'll have your little certificate. Um, some other people may be asking, what is a UAS? I, I say drone, drone as, as because this is what we do. We do quadcopters, which is usually what, what people think of as a drone. In this case, a UAS is going to be a multi-copter, a fixed wing remote control aircraft or a helicopter remote control, anything that's gonna be remote control is gonna fall under a UAS and it's going to fall under this uh, regulation here for recreational purposes. So something that you have to keep in mind. Let's talk about the test in itself. What does it consist of? And, and the answer again, it's very simple. It's 30 minutes of content. You're gonna have to read a few uh, slides. There's four quizzes throughout the entire training. Once you complete all four of these quizzes, then you're gonna get a certificate of completion. That certificate of completion is your legal piece of paperwork that you can print, download, and then show the authorities. Um, you have to show it to law enforcement and you have to show it to the FAA if they ask you uh, if you completed the training. Here's the kicker though. You cannot re-download the certificate once it has been issued. There is no record that is being kept. So you need to download the certificate. You need to keep it somewhere on your hard drive print it, put it in your fly bag, whatever it is that you do, save it on Dropbox, make it available somewhere so that you don't, uh, so you don't lose it. If you lose it, you're gonna have to go back and take the test again and then get a new certificate, but you can go back. We don't have a copy of your uh, paperwork, so you need to make sure that you download it. So I wanna, I wanna answer some Q and A's to, to continue with this video because I know there's gonna be a lot of questions out there and I know there has already been quite a few questions. So um, I, I collected all of them and I wanna go through this list. The first question that we hear a lot is, how long is this certificate going to be valid for? And the answer is forever. There is no expiration date, unlike your Part 107 that expires every two years or, or that needs to be renewed every two years. In this case, you do it once and then you're done, okay? The second question that we get a lot is, what if I lose my certificate? Well, like I said before, if you lose your certificate, you have to do it again. You have to do the training again and you have to get a new certificate. Uh, another question, what if I'm asked to pay for this? This is free, okay? The FA wanted this to be provided for free. If somebody is asking you to pay for this, then you're probably in the wrong place, you're probably getting scammed. So if that's the case, then make sure that you report it to the FA because nobody can charge for this training. 
The next question is, is my data being kept? And the answer is no, no one, none of the providers are supposed to uh, keep your data. We don't keep your data. As soon as we issue the certificate, the, 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 the data is being deleted. And as soon as it's deleted, then that's it. We don't have access to it. So uh, if you're getting uh, emails after you took the exam from one of the testing providers, then it probably means that somebody kept the data and that's not a good thing. So that needs to also be reported. Um, Another question that we get a lot is, uh, who do I need to show my certificate? And uh, the answer is the FAA and law enforcement. If you look in 44809, that's what it mentions in there in the regulation. So if an FAA person comes in and says, hey, prove to me that you took this, uh, this test, then, uh, then you need to show it to them. Same for law enforcement. Another question that we get is, can I wait to do this until my registration is due? This is not really tied to registration. As a matter of fact, some drones, sub 250 gram drones, don't need to be registered, but you still have to do the training. So it's not tied to registration. Don't wait until your registration is due. Do the testing today because it is available and it's ready for you uh, to be taken. Another question that I've been hearing is, does this add any more limitation to flying as a recreational pilot? And the answer is no. This is really uh, one of the things that the FAA, there's nine items that you need to do in order to fly for recreational purposes. And this is one of the nine items that the FAA had to put in uh, after the 2018 Reauthorization Act. And so um, this is just one of the requirements. There's no additional requirements from what you've seen before. So if you've, if you've been flying for a while for recreational purposes, then, then this is basically just the same thing. Another question that I think is just not even related to trust necessarily, but uh, is can I fly recreationally if I have a Part 107 certificate? And the answer is yes. Yes, because you have a Part 107 doesn't mean that you always have to fly under Part 107. Now, with that being said, if you have a Part 107 and you want to fly for recreational purposes, then now you need to do this test before you do this. Again, very simple, 30 minutes, free, get it done one time and then that's it. Another question that I get, and the reason I wanted to mention this one is because I think there is a learning opportunity here. Um, my kid flies a sub 250 gram drone. Does he or she need to do the test? And the answer is yes, there is no age limit. So if you have a 10 year old or 13 year old or whatever it is that is flying a drone, make sure that they do the test. And the test was designed to be accomplished by anyone. It is easily accessible. The language in there is very easily understandable. And, uh, and guess what? This is a great learning opportunity. This is a great way to sit down with your kids and, uh, and have them take this, uh, this training. Now, I'm, I'm going to add something because, um, well, because I, I think this is a question that might pop up quite a bit. I want you guys to think about this as training. I know that the last T in trust is test, but really the idea is this should be training. And, and this is what this is all about. It's not about the test. The test is simple. You can fail the test. When you get to the end of it, if you get the wrong answer, the test is gonna ask you to guess again on the same question. The goal is not to get a grade. You're gonna get 100%. You have to finish this. You have to get all of them correctly. The goal is to get an education. And this is what's important really in this case. So I want you to think about the, the, the philosophy here. This is not a test. This is training to get people educated so that, well, so that we don't have accidents, so that we don't have people flying close to airports when they're not supposed to. This is a training opportunity. I think this is a great opportunity. Another question I've been hearing is, I belong to an AMA club, do I still need to do this? And the answer is yes. If you remember, uh, previously I mentioned that a, a UAS is considered a, any remote controlled aircraft, helicopter, uh, multi-copter, whatever it is that you fly. So even if you belong to an AMA club, even if you fly at an AMA club, you still need to meet the requirement for 44809 for flying for recreational purposes. So yes, you do need to complete this. Again, 30 minutes, it's free, it's a one-time deal and then you'll probably learn something. And then the last question that I want to answer is, what if I don't take the exam and then I fly anyway? Well, if you don't wanna take the exam, it's on you. Quite frankly, it's a requirement under 44809. It's one of the nine things that you have to do. And if you purposely decide not to do one of these, then you technically don't qualify for 44809. Now, again, it's free, it's 30 minutes of your time, 
you get a certificate, you get educated, you get free education. So I, I think it's in every, everybody's uh, best interest to just go ahead and, and do this. And quite frankly, I, I went through it obviously several times because we did the platform to uh, to get this thing working for you guys. And, and the training is good. It provides good information. It's, it's, uh, it's sensible information that everybody should know before they fly. So uh, if you decide on not, on not doing this, then well, that, that's on you and, and I somewhat fail, I guess. Okay, um, that's it. That's all I have. The only thing now, head over, trust that pilotinstitute.com, complete the training, do the four quizzes, get your certificate, save it, okay? Save it. If you don't save it and you close everything, you're done. We don't have a record of it. And then uh, go on and enjoy your flight. So that's all I have. I'll see you guys next time.